Hi everyone, I am Soumya, an associate software engineer at Red Hat and an educator. In this video, I will talk in detail how I learned to code and what things I would have done differently if I could restart my career. With a laptop, internet and few lines of code, you can create an awesome application like Spotify. If I could restart my career, I would start learning programming from day one of college. Let's get into the video where I will explain in detail how I learned to code and if I could start over again, how I would go about it. If you are new to the channel, make sure you like, subscribe and if you have any queries, feel free to drop them in the comment section below and we will be happy to answer them. If I talk about the flow in which usually we software engineers study, firstly, we start with the programming language. That's the step number one. There are plenty of programming languages. Some of the industry standard languages include Java, C++, Python, as well as there are more like JavaScript, Kotlin. I will be talking in detail about each of this in the video. Secondly, we have to focus on data structure and algorithm. If you want to become a software engineer at the top notch companies, at good startups, then DSA is something they focus heavily in the interviews. And after that, you can work upon some development skill. Now in development skill, there are web development, mobile app development, machine learning, AI. Again, lot many things are there. I will explain everything in detail. So let's get into the video. Your first goal to becoming a software engineer is to learn a programming language. Pick that language which aligns with your end goal. As a beginner, it's very confusing to decide which language to learn first. Many people will talk about JavaScript. Others say learn that industry standard language like Java, Python or C++. It really becomes very confusing. On the internet, in the friend circle, everyone gives different advices. So as I said in the beginning, you have to choose that language which aligns with your end goal. Your end goal might be becoming a machine learning engineer, mobile application developer or maybe core software engineer. I will tell you in detail which profile needs which tech stack and then you can decide accordingly. If your end goal is to become a core software engineer, grab placement or internship by the end of your engineering then focus on the industry standard language, mainly Java or C++. These both languages are heavily used by software engineers and the industry as well. The DSA interviews are mainly focused on these two languages. Some of the candidates prefer Python as well, but Java and C++ is something which most of the candidates choose. If we talk about myself, C++ was one of the first programming languages that I learned in 11th grade. There was a book C++ by Sumita Arora that was really very detailed that helped me in understanding all the fundamental concepts of programming like for loop, while loop and after that transitioning to other languages like Java later on in my university was very easy for me. Java later helped me in becoming mobile application developer as well since mobile application development is such a skill where mainly Java and Kotlin is used if you are making apps for Android platform. Now let's understand if you want to become a mobile application developer, which programming language will help you? Mobile application development is mainly divided into three types based on the operating system for which you develop the application. If you are developing mobile application for the Android platform, then you will be called as Android app developer. For this one, you mainly need expertise in Java and Kotlin. The apps are developed using the Android Studio software. If you develop applications for iPhones, that is iOS platform, then you will be called iOS developer. These developer usually prefer using C and Swift as their main language. In India, there are 96% of Android developers, while only 3% of the developers develop application for iOS platforms. The Android developers publish applications on Google Play Store for which the video is already available on this channel. You can check that out. And the iOS developers develop application that goes live on App Store, which is the verified store for iPhones. And then the third category is cross-platform developers. 
the cross platform developers develop application which works on multiple platform the technologies and frameworks used by these developers include react native dart flutter etc now the demand of the native developer that is android developer in india especially is still very high the cross platform developer it sounds that okay they can do a lot of work in one time but when it comes to quality then natives are much more preferred that's why if you have to get an application for android platform then android developers are the people are the folks who are given more preference now coming to web development there are two main parts in it front end and back end for front end html css and javascript are the most used technologies and frameworks html is used to give basic structure to the website on the other hand css is used to do a makeover of the website which color which theme will be used on the website it's all decided with the help of css and the main function like let's say if there is a button so on clicking that button what action should be performed that is decided by javascript these three are the most significant languages when it comes to making a website the other thing is backend for backend node.js and mongodb the combination is most commonly used node.js is the runtime environment of javascript itself let me give you an example for the same in the amazon website whatever you see on the ui that is called front end if you are saving something to the cart if you are purchasing something all those things are managed by the back end code let's say you have some profile details or you have your recent or maybe past orders to manage all the things to store all the data we have databases as well there are two types of main databases tabular and non tabular now if you want to become a machine learning engineer then python is the language you should choose for folks who want to get into ai ml python is the most commonly used language so by now you have got a good idea of which programming language to choose based on your end goal if we talk about myself i started with c++ and then gradually shifted to java and mobile application development was the most significant thing most significant development skill that excites me and i learned that skill apart from that core software engineering is always there and for that as well java is something which you can use in the dsa rounds of the companies java is like heavily used right so yes you can either choose java or c++ if you want to become a core software engineer apart from that i discussed in detail for the different kind of profiles which tech stack which programming language or framework you should choose after learning a programming language you should focus on dsa that is data structure and algorithms as i said earlier as well even if you want to get into development let's say you want to become a mobile application developer then also a strong knowledge of a decent knowledge of data structure and algorithm will help you a lot let's say you are a mobile application developer and you have to develop a music application if you will have a decent knowledge of data structure algorithm you will be able to decide which data structure to use stacks or queues if you have to make a playlist of music so in all the cases if you want to get into development if you want to get into it industry if you want to become a coder then a decent knowledge of data structure algorithm will never hurt even if you want to become a core developer or maybe a core software engineer for practicing data structure algorithm questions i would highly recommend using the interview bit platform they have literally a good collection of questions which are like heavily asked by most of the companies they have tags as well like which question is asked by which company and my personal favorite feature is the topic wise filtering feature let's say you are learning data structure algorithm first you are learning the theory thing from maybe youtube blog article anywhere then you can complete the theory knowledge from that platform let's say you are learning binary search so you can get a decent knowledge of how binary search algorithm works how binary search is or maybe any data structure let's say arrays are there strings are there get a decent knowledge of the theory stuff 
and once you have the knowledge clear you can come here on the interview bit platform they have the topic filter put the filter let's say you are learning arrays or binary search put the filter start solving the questions the more will be the number of questions you will solve the better will be your confidence level when you will be giving the actual interview so this is the flow which you can follow learn the theory thing from a website from youtube anywhere and then come on this platform and solve the question this way you can get a good confidence before the interview the final step after learning programming language understanding the basics of how data structure and algorithm works you have to work on some projects as well as a fresher if especially you have not done any internship in your college days then it's very significant that you work on some good project and add that to your resume that will really help you in getting a good preference in front of the interviewers because they really give more weightage to those candidates who have good projects and everything added in their resume now for the project thing you have multiple option you can either choose to learn web development mobile application development machine learning ai there are plenty of things and to be honest this huge this long list often confuses students often confuses the beginner they are like should i go into web development should i learn mobile application development so let me clarify this thing it happens with everyone actually after learning basics of dsa and everything we are often like for the project thing should we just develop a website or like machine learning is a fancy word should we get into that one of the best advices i got when i was starting my journey into development in all is in the starting often we don't have knowledge that okay what mobile application development is about or what machine learning is but like after watching this video you would have got a decent knowledge if you want to become a web developer which technologies and framework you should focus more if you want to get into machine learning what are the tech stack and everything you should be learning so do one thing if in the starting you are not sure what is something that excites you you can follow the simple procedure just give one one week to each of these tech stack i mean each of these you know a skill just explore what web development is for a week understand what mobile application development is for one week this we just uh, get a brief of what these technologies are what are the languages and everything needed what are the softwares needed for each of these skill and by the end of the month you will have a decent knowledge of what something which excites you for an example if i consider my case i started with c++ then java and mobile application development is something that always fascinated me when i used to see those apps no like zomato amazon gmail youtube i always was curious i always was eager to know how those applications are developed that's how i decided that okay now i have decent knowledge of java i have learned a bit of data structure algorithm now i want to learn how to develop these mobile application that curiosity helped me a lot and because i already knew java so learning mobile application development become even more easy so concluding this if you want to become a mobile application developer then a powerful laptop is something which you will certainly need on the other hand if you want to get into web development the plus point of web development is that there are plenty of free resources available for that domain for that skill on the internet there are so many youtube videos there are so many articles blogs and especially on tech twitter you will see so many threads that give you the list of useful resources if you want to become a web developer let me tell you an interesting thing on tech twitter there are so many communities active of web developers where they accept challenges like 100 days of code 30 days of code and every day they share what new thing they are learning in that particular domain similarly some people follow the 100 days of mobile app development challenge and even like 30 days of dsa 30 days of coding challenge that's a very beautiful thing in the tech community that folks follow to motivate each other and to help each other in learning new concept when you accept publicly that you are going to follow 100 days of coding challenge or 30 days of web development challenge that will certainly help you in keeping yourself motivated in completing that particular task so if you want to get into coding into tech industry step number 1 is to learn a programming language after that 
master data structure and algorithm and thirdly you can work upon a development skill like web development machine learning mobile application development or if you want to improve your problem solving then you can do competitive programming as well once you have learned a programming language practice data structure algorithm then for the projects you can also choose to contribute to some of the open source projects out there for detailed open source project information we already have a video on this channel as well there are plenty of projects where different kind of tech stack different programming languages like java kotlin html everything is used you can go on the explore section on github and choose the right project for yourself if you are not willing to or if you are not able to make a project develop a project on your own then this can be a good solution for you you can add your pull request details the issues that you work upon in your resume that will also help the interviewer understand that okay this person this candidate know a bit of development has already contributed to big open source project that means has a decent knowledge of how to write code and how to develop application software so you can do this as well if you want to add projects into your resume now if you are going to apply for interviews if you are going to apply for internships or jobs your resume will also play a very very significant role make sure you make the right kind of resume if you have done internship add all those detail in your resume if you have not done any internship make sure you have worked on some good projects maybe freelancing project or open source project if you have developed something interesting in any hackathon make sure to add the details of all those projects in your resume that will really help you a lot because for freshers the interviewers prefer to see lot of practical things lot of practical projects that they have worked upon so i hope this video was useful for you in understanding all the steps that you have to take if you want to get into the tech industry as a software engineer as a coder make sure you like the video subscribe to our channel and if you have any doubts or queries drop them down in the comment section below and we will be happy to answer them